Hi everyone, this is Asim here. Welcome back to our channel. So today we are going to start with the recon process in the bug bounty series, and there would be a couple of videos over the couple of weeks because a lot of a lot of to be covered in this, and we we are going to try to create the whole infrastructure for that. So this is heavily inspired from the level up two talk from Jadix, which was the bug hunter methodology. I think that was the first talk about that. So I made a same script for that, so as to set up all the tools on a VPS and like add like output of one tool goes to the other, and then the whole processing does. So you just enter a target domain, and you would get output with all the fire sub domains found out, and the nmap run, and then the port open, and all those things, the screenshot as well. So that's what we are going to trying to achieve here. So today we are going to set up the VPS. And we are going to add our SSH key there. Then we are going to set the asset finder as well as the sub finder. So initially, I thought of setting up Amas, but I usually use Amas as Amas hyphen D then the the domain, right? Most of the people would be using in the same way, I guess. But when I was like researching for this video, I went to the page of Amas the repository and I read the tutorial, and it was an extensive tutorial. I saw a lot of things. A lot of things it could do. It almost covered a lot of other tools. I think even asset finder, some finder would be consumed by that because the sources are the same. And then there is uh, visualization as well. Then there is, I guess, uh, there is a tracking feature. So if you have like you were searching for hackerone.com, right? So you add some subdomains. You add a database which it stores in itself. So the next time you scan hackerone.com, it would show you the difference. Like these other ports have been changed, or these other uh, IPs have changed, and all those things. Not the ports, the IPs have changed, or their MX record has changed, or all those things. So it's a quite a good tool. So I thought it would be unfair if I just add it, try to add it here as, as well. So I would be making a separate video. The next video, I it would be on Amas itself. So comment in the video if you feel other tools need to be added. I also made a repo where I am like trying to collate all the tools and their sources, so that you could verify that okay, these tools have these resources and then these particular tools that you need to add. So like you need to cover so that all the sources have covered because the more number of sources you cover, the more number of subdomains you can find. So this would be a slightly longer video, I say, but yeah, good things take time, right? So please bear with me. So without further ado, let's start with the slides. So there are two recon types: the automated and manual. So automated is what we are gonna figure out here because automation is good when you have scripts ready. The machines could do all the work, so in automated fashion. Whereas manual is when you are trying to find credentials, you are looking for people on different organization and trying to find some hidden secret in their repositories. So that would be the manual type. So this is the whole infrastructure. So don't go, don't get overwhelmed by this. I've seen a lot more bigger diagrams than that. So this is a simplified version, but it covers everything. So the base of this whole recon process is to expand your like expand your attack surface or target surface, and also figure out low hanging fruits or open ports or all those things. So what happens is first you find the subdomains and then you find the DNA using master DNA to resolve the IPs. Then you figure out open ports. And you also take screenshots and figure out the subdomain takeover, like if there's subdomain using string, string matching and aquatone and all those things. So well, let me explain the diagram first. So blue is the target. So you enter the target from blue, and it goes through the process, finding out the subdomains, then resolving IP addresses, doing a mask scan to find open port, doing nmap on those specific ports to figure out in detail what uh, which tools or which services are running on that. Parallelly, using parallelly, you are also doing a screenshot using Aquatone, and Aquatone also figures out like subdomain takeovers as well, I guess. Then all this is collated into a zip, so you get a zip as a final output there. So the green boxes are those for which I have the script right now. So I have the script for this whole pipeline, cover starting from the blue box, covering all the green boxes, and then the output. So I just run the script as like master script dot sh, then space the target name. And like basic or advanced, there's an option for that. So when you enter that, eventually you get a zip in the end, and just download it from your VPS. So in this video, we would be setting like we would be setting up our own VPS on DataOcean. So we would be creating a data uh, droplet there, and then we would try to install Asset Finder and Sub Finder there. So this is the DataOcean droplet screen after you're logged in. 
So there's a referral link. So if you go through that referral link, you would get a hundred dollars for sixty days. So that's a catch. That's for sixty days. However, if you, even if you don't go through that, you would still get six hundred dollars. So what happens is if you go through that, I would also get like around twenty-five or fifty dollars. I'm not sure about that. So either way, you get hundred dollars. So you just make a trial account here and you sign up with your email. So then you get that. Uh, so I'm using Data Lotion because I've already used these earlier and it's quite good. I've also used UpCloud and Vulture. Those are also good, uh, but the maximum credit was supplied here, so I thought of sharing this with you. So since you get a hundred dollars for only sixty days, so instead of like running fifty dollar droplet for two months, because that would be a killer reg, I would say. So instead of running that, I would say that you run ten droplets, uh, sorry, five droplets of ten dollar each. That would be quite decent because then you would get five different IPs, and if you run the same tools on those like five different targets using those five different VPS, so that won't be like blocking your IP. And that would be a better approach instead of running a single droplet of fifty dollars. So let's create a droplet. So you could choose the distribution. Oh, so I have chosen the Ubuntu version, standard. Five dollar. You could use since you have. If you have a hundred dollar credit, or even if you don't have, I would still say go with the ten dollar monthly one, because five dollar is like like it has very minimum resources. It does the job, but I would still say ten dollar is like better. It has some resources so that you don't get a bottleneck. You could choose any one. I choose the default one. I don't choose usually. You could leave these options as default. SSH key. I have my SSH key added, but I would say if you like, if you don't have the SSH key, go and add a new SSH key. So this is how you would create a SSH key. So you copy this command, then you go to the terminal. So you just run this command. So enter the file in which you have. So I just press enter. Overwrite. Uh, yeah, because I already have that. So I would overwrite that. Passwords you could leave these empty. So now your we are your SSH key has been made. So you just need to copy this. Add you could do a cat here and just like copy the content of this file and paste it here. You could like give it any name. My SSH key to quite innovative. So after I have added this key, so I have added both. So the, these SSH key would be automatically added into a droplet once they have been made. So you could access them easily, I guess. So now leave these options as is. Now you could add a tag. I don't need those. So I just create a droplet. You could click on this. So this is the IP that. That would be for the droplet. It's still running. So now we have our server up. Just copy the IP address and do SSH into the system. So SSH root at the right IP address. So do a yes here. So the first thing that you would do is apt get update. So after updating, so the first thing we need to do is install the asset finder. So here you just need to run the go get to install the asset finder. So I would suggest that you install the go as we as I told you in the previous way. So I would go and download the go binary. I am fast forwarding this because I have already shown this in the previous video. After having all that set, let's install asset finder. So it's okay. I need to reload the batch RC. Now let's check the Go version. This is 1.14.4. There's another way of installing Go that one of the viewers suggested that use this. So I won't recommend this because, as you can see, this would install a GoLang 1.10 version, and that like that won't be fitting with this subfinder. So. The finder requires, uh, I guess, 1.13 up. So it requires Go 1.13 plus. So if you would have installed it like this, so you would be stuck with the 1.10 version. Then you would have to apt get remove GoLang and then again do the same process that I told in the previous video. So instead of installing like this, I installed using the 
like latest version that I told about. So now we will do the go get command to install the asset finder. So we would have the asset finder here. So now you can see asset finder is working fine. I did some mistake in setting the path, so that's that. So now we, since we have this, now let's install the uh, sub finder. So you could do the release as well. You could download the release and copy that file and follow the instructions here. But since we already have the go running and this would like the release might be a day or two old, but this would be downloading the latest repo and all those things. So the latest commit in this repo is I guess 19 days back and that's when the release are also done. So it's updated, but in most of the cases what would happen is the repo might have some new changes, but the release page won't have that because release are like done once in a while. So that's that. So I prefer doing a go get because I already have go installed and everything's working fine. So why not do that? So sub find is also working fine. You saw how easy it was. So there's a few things that you need to do after installing and post installation instructions are there. So basically you need to have the API key for all these APIs that subfinder uses as well as in, as in the asset finder as well. So you have the virus total API token, FB API app, spice app. So in like, I would show you how you get API token for this. So let's see for virus total. So basically you need to sign up for an account and once you sign up for an account, you should see the API key in the setting. I don't prefer always signing up with my personal email address. So what I'm going to use is a temporary email address. So here is the sign up thing. So let's use a temp mail. So temp mail is basically creates a temporary mail and you could use that to sign up on services which you like. You don't prefer to sign up with your personal email address. So there would be a verification mail sent to the temporary email address. So that's pretty much sorted here. Uh, welcome to the show. We have sent a message to email address. So check the info. So you don't have to give a personal email address. Why? Why? Why should you? Right. I just go here, and now you could like delete the email address as well, and just go on with your work. So see, API is here. Okay, you need to sign in as well first. I think. I think. Oh, it should have automatically signed in. In most of the cases, when you verify your account, it automatically signs in as well. I guess I had to sign it here. So see, API key is here. Request premium API key. This is not, I don't have a premium account, so I would be running with this. So just copy this API key and use it as in the config file as I mentioned. So they mentioned that these values are stored in home. So let's, let me check this file. I'm not able to copy this properly. To aim this right, so let me check this. There's a config YAML. So, as they told you, that once you run it for the first time, it automatically does that. So, since it did a sub finder icon, it will create it there. So, in the virus total thing, I just need to copy this key. So, copy it here. So, where is the virus total? So, virus total is at the bottom, right? So probably, I just take some. Copy it, paste it here. So I think it's uh, like square bracket because it would be an array. So you could add multiple virus total API keys for multiple accounts. So that would facilitate like if once your limit is reached in one of the API keys, so you could use the other as well. So there are some like policies regarding that. So please read that before using multiple API keys because like in GitHub, GitHub strictly prevents making multiple API keys to do that. So there could be policies around that, so be cautious about that. So let's let's run sub finder iPhone. So sub finder iPhone D like domain for so let's search for hacker one dot com. So subdomains for hacker so it already started giving us some of the subdomains. So it would run like this. So there are okay, we got only these many domains because we had very few keys, right? Like we had only one of the API keys. So if you have all these API keys set like for binary edge and say search portal, so you would get a lot more results than I got. 
that's pretty much installing these tools so another thing i wanted to mention is about like finding the js files so one of the person on twitter tweeted me that you could find the js files from the console as well and you could like do a regex search there so it's good we are we could do that but the problem that i was talking about there was that once you change the page the these resources get reloaded like suppose if i, if I do a control f or control shift f as it mentioned so if i do a like suppose get and i search here so it would search in all these files which are present here so it would show get from all these files right but like suppose if i click on this link and i go to other page so these files would get reloaded as you could see that these files have been reloaded right if i go to sign up page these would again get reloaded so you won't like you won't find the same you would have to do the search again and again so that's what i was talking about in the tweet that instead of doing this because you would have to do it again and again you could download all the js files and regarding the download also a uh, person ping me that there's a tool from tom nom nom again so tom nom nom ffff and that would facilitate in like downloading that the file or i think it was the previous one so it made a tool there so you could just cat urls.txt and then ffff so basically urls.txt in this context would mean the all the js urls and it would download it using like ffff so this is how you would do that let's come back to the slides i i have to talk of two things more so these are the some of the asset finder sources and sub finder sources that they have implemented amas has a lot more sources i would be making a dedicated video on that so this is a work in progress that i am making on my repo so it's not currently public so you might not see this but in a week or so i would be making it public after collecting all these so you could create prs if you have your own tool you could create pr for them as well you could add it a column and you could add the sources so that people know that okay these particular domains are covered with this tool and this particular domains are covered with this tool so if we have both of these tools so we would cover all those like uh, sources right so prs are welcome so another common question that people might ask is can i use my pc for these tasks yes absolutely you could use this but i would highly recommend against that because like of the high speed and bandwidth that you saw at 69 mbps you probably won't get that on your broadband or your ips another thing that if you are running or high threads like 200 threads or 400 threads or multiple tools parallelly then there would be significant you cpu usage and once you are running on your laptop you might have a 16 gb laptop but it may be unusable for other network traffic thing because the whole network adapter would be choked by the resource, by the request from those tools and the third thing is that these servers are running 24/7 so you don't have to worry about the electricity cost or any other maintenance cost and probably you won't be like good with running your pc for 24/7 for the whole month and such so i prefer using a vps it's very cheap like $5 $10 that would be worth it for running automated scan and all those last thing before i quit this video is that join the subreddit people are asking questions instead of dming me you could do that because i see a lot of people having the same question in dm so i recommend them as well that ask it on the subreddit so that a lot of other people would also benefit from that so the community is going people are asking good articles are being posted there daily so do jump on the subreddit so that's pretty much all about it for today if you have any anything that you want to talk about you could or you want me to make video on that there's a feedback form you could like submit a feedback as well and submit any topics that you want videos to be covered so that's all thank you have a nice day